Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cosmic Conversations. I'm your host, Sheila Seppi, and I have this lovely crew here with me. We are on gallery view, so you can see my beautiful sisters that are here. We have the lovely Larissa Stowe. We have the beautiful Michelle Anderson, and Michelle has been my co-host for the entire month. I am absolutely thrilled. She is a phenomenal co-host, a great sister. Um, I think the first time we met, we talked for hours on the phone. It was one of the, hey, let's get together. Let's have a 30-minute call, you know, and it, it's, <laughs> it was just wonderful. We ended up spending the whole day together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, and we're here throughout this entire month, we've been talking about the Sunfire Festival, which is really near and dear to Michelle's heart. But Michelle, before we actually take off and, um, you know, start with our interviews and things, I'd really like for you to tell people just a little bit more about yourself and, you know, the work that you're doing and how, maybe a little bit about how you came to do what it is you're doing. Well, you, 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 you stumped me. On that <laughs> one. <laughs> um, one of the things that I feel when I describe myself is that I, I feel much more comfortable highlighting the, just the essence of people that I come across and that I meet and then introducing people back and forth, because I, I seem to have a knack for it. I seem to be able to uh, get a hit when I meet somebody. I feel like I know that you and my other friend would really have have some collaboration that might happen, and I'd like to introduce you. So I feel like I'm I'm just a um, somebody who introduces a lot of people, and that's my greatest joy is making these connections that I think are for the upliftment of all, you know, that when we come together and we collaborate together and we celebrate everybody's successes, then we all win and there's no competition there. And I'd like to see the world and vision a world in where there's, there's harmony. So that's, that's what brought me here, you know, is that I met you, Sheila, and fell in love with you right away through a Portal to Ascension webinar. And that's a group that I love to work with, Portal to Ascension, as well as Disclosure Fest, doing the mass meditations and working with Adrian Valera of Disclosure Fest, doing um, the Feed Our Souls programs and the... Um, my husband just interrupted and I get all <laughs> he's walking in wanting to feed me. Um, anyway, I, I like to do to collaborate with other people that are high vibe and that are in integrity and operating from a heart space where they're in service. And that's a that's what brings me the most joy. And so I found a lot of people through my work with Awakening Code Radio, which I've been co-hosting Eric Rankin on Awakening Code Radio and doing that for the past 10 plus years. And so that's really what I like to do. I have facilitated journeys to sacred vortex sites like Peru and Mount Shasta and Sedona. And, and I like to... Um, take people on the water to be with dolphins and whales. And I live in an area where it's very easy to do that because there are so many dolphins and whales in our area. And we go on the water and we commune with them in, in just a blissful state. Larissa has been with us on the boat once I or sure twice. Have. Yes. It's, huh? a, it's incredible and magical. And so many amazing people are magnetized to that boat because of you, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you well when the dolphins placed it on my heart to start doing these dolphin boat trips really what they wanted me to do was gather people together that maybe didn't know each other before and it's a place for people to meet in that heart space with with joy you know and that really what they want us to do is put our love and our intentions for what we want to co-create in the world into the waters because the water is a conductor of energy and so that's what we do we go with a very conscious intention to do that and then we find out that when the dolphins show up we all get so excited that that the joy is palpable and i know there's been a lot of research on 
the feeling when we put feeling with our intentions and in our prayer, I, there's been a lot of research that it, we manifest. That's the sweet spot on how to manifest. So I see that Naraya is trying to call me. Um, Naria is uh, one of our other guests tonight, and I can't really get her right now. So I'm going to text her. Um, why don't we start? I saw your lips moving, Sheila, but I don't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. So why don't you take a moment? Also, I do want to say I have another special guest here. He'll be hopping on a little bit later with us, but um, I have Kiara Windrider. I'm going to take my backdrop off and we have Ta-da! So Kiara is here. He's visiting. I'm so thrilled to have him. We've had a great time. We did some workshopping, some uh, sessions, and he'll be coming back in August to conduct a three-day workshop on um, shamanic Inca practices. So we're doing a lot of planning and having a lot of fun. So I, I wanted him just to pop on and say hi to, to everyone as hey, well. Speaking of dolphins and whales. That's right. Yeah, uh, really, really. I want to talk with you about that some more, Michelle. I'm taking a group to swim with dolphins in the Red Sea in September. Wonderful. And I'd love for you and friends to come join, and I want to come join where you are. So let's talk some more. Okay, for sure. We mention your name all the time on our show because that we had a really good time when you came on Awakening. That was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we awesome. do that again. Great. All right, honey. All right, Larissa, I'm going to go ahead and bring you on up. So we're so thrilled to have you with us here tonight. Thank you so much. And, you know, we were doing a little chit chat before we got started and, you know, talking about how things are real. And tonight, man, we are really making it real because everything electronic is, you know, not doing its thing. It's happening. And I know it just happens. <laughs> and you just, you've just got to go with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just kind of loved some of your statements about how we just sort of, you know, drop into the minute and go with the flow. And um, I just, I just really appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm happy to be here too, Sheila, even with all the technical stuff that's happening. It's almost like that when that happens, it really <laughs> asks us to come forward and, and be present, you know, in our heart and, and to be with it. Cause then we learn that we can do anything. Right. So it's, right. it's okay. It's okay when these, these things happen. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it gives us permission to be human. That's right. Yes, it so does because you know we've we've so done the other where we feel like we have to be perfect and and it's so important to be transparent to be be courageously vulnerable, you know, with ourselves and with each other. You know, that's like what radical like that self acceptance, which is love. You know, it's love it cultivates love, and we're not trying to be something, but we just we just are, and we're just showing up to just you know love each other and ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. So much easier. So much easier. <laughs> I know when I listen to you, when I listen to you, Larissa, and I think because you are one of the most authentic humans, you know, that are that are doing great works in the world. And when I see you on stage, I know that a lot of times people place a persona on somebody because they see somebody on stage and they're they're you know, you're, what you do is you move people to open their hearts and your singing is so incredible. It puts us in a, in an ecstatic, blissful state. That's what I felt the first time I ever experienced you and your band, Larissa Stowe and Shakti Tribe are, I, I, there, I just don't have the right human words to explain the feeling that you get when you're at one of their events, their concerts. But on top of that, Larissa, you are just a remarkable human being. And it's been so great for me to get to know you and become your friend. And, you know, we you're just real. And we have your birthday party at my house and hang out, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then see all the work that you're doing in the world, bringing people into community. I, I, I witness you 
bringing people into that radical self-acceptance and giving them tools on how to navigate how to navigate these times we're in there, you know, I, I know that a lot of us are experiencing this leap in our evolutionary process. And sometimes it knocks us off our, our rocker. And yeah. You don't seem to get knocked too much. You well, just, um, well, that's what I think. <laughs> I don't know, honey. There's like, <laughs> there's the outward expression of that. And then there's, you know, our inner experience, right? Like I definitely feel like, all right okay you know how do i show up and surrender to the things that are you know like it almost feels like we're in a video game at times you know and we're going through these different levels and we get knocked down but we get up again it's all about getting up again right you know you get knocked down you get thrown off but that's very human it's like and the more we can just really love ourselves and love each other and just drop this whole perfectionist thing and at the core of it, it really is about love. There's just like, there's nothing else, you know? And we can talk so long about mm -hmm. all the different wonderful religions and all the different practices and all the different beliefs. But when it comes down to it, it's so simple. It really is. It's just, it's just love and kindness at the end of the day, right? And when things get like really wild and rocky and crazy and just loving ourselves and loving each other and just dropping in and huddling in close. And the magic happens there. You know, I, I, tonight, right before, you know, we, I knew we had this call at a, when I needed to show up, my husband says, we need to run and get these papers notarized. And I could feel myself getting anxious and thinking, but I need to have enough time to be ready for my call. And I, you know, you're pushing me to get this done, but I didn't say any of that. I just thought, we have enough time. We'll figure it out. We go to the bank and the bank can't do the notary. And then they send us over to this other mail place. And we we're supposed to have two witnesses. And the notary says, you don't need two witnesses. I've been doing this all these years. And I'm just, I'm, I'm witnessing myself staying relaxed when it's all going on around me. And this man walks up and my husband says, oh, look, they, there's two witnesses right there. We don't even know these people. Right? <laughs> my husband says to them, will you be our witness for, you know, notarize this? And the man looks at it and I said, my mother passed and I, I need to sign these documents. And he said, um, so he starts reading them. And I was like, are you an attorney? And he said, I am. And I said, what, w would you be our witness? And he says, yes, he signs them. And then before he left, I said, what kind of law do you practice? And he said, trust, doing, you know, trust. Oh, but this wow. is all about and I uh -huh. said, can I have your name and number? Because my husband and I are going to, after this whole process with my mom's, you know, her trust, and I learned a lot, but my husband looks at me like, how did, how did that just happen? You know? And it's just trust. being relaxed and being in that frequency of trust. And I just thought it was funny that I, something had me ask him, what kind of law do you practice? And it was, you know, trust law. So this is where we're finding as, as this process speeds up the way that we're, we're seeing it happen, we could either collapse in mm -hmm. and really feel like contracted, or we just swim with it. Be dolphin-like. <laughs> yes. It's like that playful, the presence, right? It's just, it's being present. And it's like, that's the universe just showing up for you going, good job, honey. Yeah. You know, gotcha. you relaxed, you surrendered. And from that relaxing and surrender, you, this trust that you had created a trust lawyer. <laughs> so like, I, like, I love how that connected. <laughs> and, and living in the frequency of trust, right? Yeah. So I didn't know I was going to talk about that tonight, but it seems like it seems like that was what the universe was asking us to, to surrender to trust. And I see that Nerea is here as well. Did I pronounce your name right from one? Yes. Maria. Yes. Maria, welcome. It's nice to see you on camera. <laughs> Hello. So, Maria, meet Larissa Stowe. You're both performing at Sunfire Fest in Aztec, New Mexico in August. Hi, Maria. Hi, Larissa. Wonderful. That's great. It, yeah, I'm, 
I'm really excited. I'm really excited for the vision of Sunfire and also just to be there to participate and share music. And I love the venue. Um, you know, we've been kind of at Tico time since the beginning of it opening as a music venue. So it's just really fun. It's just such a beautiful place. The land there is really sacred and sanctified and and um, it's just a beautiful place. If you haven't been there before on the river and in yeah. the cottonwoods and just, it's really a blessed place. And a lot of people have really laid the groundwork literally and walk the land and build altars and, you know, so that it's, it's a sacred place. Yeah. So I'm excited to be there for this particular gathering. Yeah. Yeah, it feels um, very, very blessed. You can feel the inner, like the energy is just already, and it's like, ooh, you know, and you can feel that energy coming in and what's the blessing of what we get to be a part of, right? This The alchemy of what all of us get to be a part of and all of the souls that are called to, to be in that sacred alchemy together. Very mm -hmm. exciting. These are and the fun. Lisa, you played mm -hmm. there before, right? You you have played a festival there once before, haven't you? Yeah, we did last year um, at the Serenity Festival. And I'll tell you, because of that Serenity Festival, a lot of magic opened up that just like, you know, I, for those of I, you that don't know, we just bought land in um, Arizona that's called Shiloh. That wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have done the Serenity Festival because it gave me the opportunity to look at land on the way back. And it's just, so there's more magic. You know, the, the place has a lot of magic mm -hmm. and it's drawing us together, mm -hmm. you know, to create beyond what we can even imagine, which is always really fun, like to, to be the last one to know what's going to come next, you know, in that magical way. I love that. And, and Michelle, mm -hmm. I know we talked about this earlier, but I was wondering, could you give people a little bit of history? How did Sunfire Festival get started? What was the inspiration? Mm -hmm. Well, a few Monday nights ago, on our first Monday in June, Jennifer Berryhill talked about how it got started on that on that program. And and to recap a little bit of what she said, I'm not her. So it was her vision. Jen Berryhill used to be the event producer for Chief Golden Light Eagle of the Star Knowledge teachings. And when he passed, you know, she, she had gotten a vision when she went to Grandmother Tree, which is known as Devil's Tower, but we don't like to call it that. That's the oh. name, I guess. We call it Grandmother Tree. And she had gone up on the hill. I think she was fasting and she had a vision. And that's where the Five Arts of Harmony and Sunfire Fest blossomed in her. And she had told Chief that that's what her vision was. So they had planned on doing something like this. And then he passed. I believe he passed in 2021. And we were all devastated. We none of us expected it. And we we always felt like he was kind of immortal and he would always be with us. Yeah. And it feels like he still is with us and that he's guiding this. I mean, the synchronicities that have come through with, you know, I go out and I'm doing something for Sunfire Fest, and then I pass a street that says Eagle or Glen Eagle or Eagle Hills, or you know, a song comes on. He feels like he's really cheering us on for this. And his daughter took over, his daughter, Nicole, took over the um, the Star Knowledge uh, conferences and uh, selling of his books. And she's doing uh, really well with her Star Knowledge conferences in South Dakota. And there's another woman named Terry Rivera that does uh, some of those teachings in um, Serpent Mound, where she's from, she's also taken it and done some things in Mount Shasta and different areas, gone to different places. Mm -hmm. And so what's beautiful is I see this whole big collaborative effort of everybody going where they're, the energy is leading them to go to co-create uh, whatever we can do to uplift and inspire people to really come into their hearts using these different, these different methods and learning about 
learning about regenerative agriculture practices, learning more about astrology and the, the star teachings and always infusing it with music and our indigenous elders joining with us to give their teachings, the indigenous elders of the land. We've got 10 fire keepers. Uh, Naria, do you know the fire keepers that are coming to Sunfire Fest? If, if you've been at Tico time, I think you might know. Nathan, do you know any of them? Have you ever worked with any of them? Maybe not. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know who the fire, I, I don't know the names of the fire keepers who've been there in, at the sacred fire in the past. Um, yeah. So well, the I ancestral village holds. I have that. Yeah. I think your, your camera, Go ahead. your camera broke up for a minute, but that's okay. But the, um, there are many indigenous elders and, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful First Nation people that are coming forward that want to be a part of this. And so it, it kind of, I feel like it's, it's a grassroots effort that's growing and, and expanding because of the heart vision of Jennifer Berryhill. And that's why I said I would help her. You know, she asked for my help. She asked for Christy Grace's help. And Christy Grace has done many of these festivals, including Serenity and Unison. And she works for Tico Time, putting on their different festivals, the Bluegrass Festival. And they all have a little bit different vibration and signature to them. But all are just as important. You know, the land is holding some some, like Larissa said, a lot of magic and a lot of sacredness there. So the, the idea is to gather people together that really want to have an, and hold that high intention of what we want to see moving forward and use the, the prayer drum, the look, singing the Sundance Lakota songs. And we have the, the singers and the drummers coming. And then we have a lot of musicians coming and, Tonight in our final Monday of Cosmic Conversations, we wanted to focus on two of our musical acts that will be there. And what I'd like to do, Larissa, I see you on split screen with me right now. What I'd like to do is ask you, I, I'm not going to put you on the spot and say, will you sing for us right now? Aww. I wish I could, <laughs> right? Because I know you've done Aww. it when I've asked you before, because you, I love your singing brings me to tears in a good way every single time I hear your voice. You open your mouth and my heart opens. Oh, honey. And, and what I'd like for you to share with our audience tonight is a little bit about what got you started in the type of music you play and, and give us, you know, paint us a picture of, of what happens to you when you play and, and the genre that your music is and how you're inspired to write your songs and do what you do. Well, you know, I have been inspired to write music for more years than I'd almost want to say. It's been quite a while, <laughs> but I've been writing, you know, since my 20s and and that's a while. Um, and I got started singing, you know, songs that were still very spiritual in nature because I've always been somebody who is really I I just love the divine so much. As a child, you know, I was obsessed with the divine. So that's always been, for me, uh, my my sweet spot, I guess you could say. And so my music back in my 20s was all about my own personal journey and in relationship to the divine and all the questioning and all the seeking. And when the World Trade Towers fell, it shifted everything for me. It felt... Um, so intense in the world and there it felt like there was such a divisive energy that that came in at that time and i felt so called to just sit there and write songs of peace i wanted to to bring music to peace prayers i had this like idea i'd written i had read james twyman's book emissary of light at the time and he had gone to a cc to a conference where religious leaders from all over the world came together and they shared their prayers and James put them in this book. And I just felt called to go sit and look through this book. And I immediately just like opened the book when there was a, 
um, the news was on and they at the time it's hard to believe that this actually happened but they were telling us to tape up our doors and windows for the threat of a terrorist attack and i just was like this is just out of control you know like i just felt like the fear was was so heightened and my own like little um the, the, the reptilian part of my own brain was activated, I guess you could say, my amygdala. And I just was called to put music to these prayers, to calm myself down, these peace prayers. And little did I know that when I started writing these prayers for myself and to calm myself down, that as I started sharing them, that people would ask me to come and share these prayers. And I did that along with putting music to mantra i was teaching kundalini yoga at the time and and was working with mantra and i just felt like i just want to put all my energy into this space like you were talking about earlier michelle you know trust right to trust to bring my vibration back into that frequency of trust rather than feeling so contracted in that fear and so I was called to do this and my band wasn't so happy with me at the time. <laughs> They're like, what are we doing here? Because <laughs> you know? it was like a complete 180 degree turn from what we had been doing. Like we were opening for like at the time Berlin and OMD and at these, these clubs. And, and then I was just like, halt. I want to sing peace prayers. <laughs> I want to sing mantra. And my audiences were like, what are you doing? Like nobody had an interest in that at the time, hearing me sing these things. Um, but other audiences did. Like my audience, my normal audience just was not into it, but I got asked to sing at all these other places and thus began a whole different flow and river for me that felt more authentic to what I needed because it really dropped me into my heart at a deeper level and got me out of my mind and into the heart out of the fear and into the love and so I never went back but what I did do is I started incorporating like I started off being I, I guess you could say more traditional in the world of kirtan and um, devotional music like pure devotional music I felt like I kind of had to be in the beginning, you know, I was finding my way and then I'm like, what am I doing? That's not totally authentic. So, cause who I kirtan? am, you mean the kirtan part? Well, the, the, the way people did kirtan, mm -hmm. I don't want to say because I do my own flavor, but I would say that in the, in the past, when I first started doing what I do, I could feel that every time I leaned into more of my own, ecstasy which is kind of intense you know for some people it's not your standard um just ah, kind of you music make, you make it work though <laughs> i love the way you do it you beat on your chest you get everybody to open their chest you get people to stick their tongues out and breathe and, <laughs> but you do it in such a graceful feminine authentic way you even get people to roar you know and uh. well that's for me that's that is like truly this this communion of spirit and the human mm -hmm. right we're we're not just one we're both and it's this beautiful communion of heaven and earth within ourselves and and this is what started moving me is to bring more of heaven and earth like i'm i am so about divine mother and that sense of really honoring this journey of being in these bodies you know we we chose to come into a body to grow consciousness you know to expand consciousness and, and the body is an amazing place to be to touch to feel to grow to go grow consciousness beyond what we know so I was called to do that and I've just, I've never stopped and it, it expanded more and more. It's like, I gave myself more permission to, to truly merge the human and what we might look as as being th that traditional devotional kind of energy. It's like, it's, it's the bridge of heaven and earth. 
you know, heaven in earth, not on earth, but it's bridging heaven in earth and earth in heaven. And that's my mission, you know, is to awaken the divine feminine truly, you know, within all of us to, to root before we rise, so to speak. You know, Perfect. Perfect. You know, you, know what I, you know what I mean by that? Because there's so much talk about ascending, 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 and that we want to ascend, but you got to, you got to root like the tree roots, right? The vegetables, plants, everything roots before it rises. If you don't root deeply into the earth and have gratitude for growth, have gratitude for the human experience that gives us this opportunity to be love in our bodies, you know, to love the human, then we don't honestly rise then it's like like what we were talking about in the beginning it's like we're putting on these social masks and looking at perfection and what spirituality looks like well spirituality is like it's us it's like these humans doing you know meeting our challenges and how we rise within those challenges yeah totally right? and sometimes it's not always pretty sometimes we have to look into the the ugly parts or what we think is right but really it's like those those shadowy parts it's like when we are with each other and we don't give up on each other it's actually the shadowy parts that create more intimacy you know when we face that together right it's like deeper it's deeper love it's real it's real it's a velveteen rabbit right so that's been my experience like with the music and where it's brought me to and what i'm excited about it's like getting people into their bodies, expressing, feeling free to really ecstatically open up to the divine and what that feels like for you, not the person next to you or anybody else, but what does that feel like in your body? Just to, just to open up, you know, with your voice. And that's what I love about devotional music too. And the kirtan is that we sing together. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm here to just give people permission to let to let go, you know, just to let go and to be who you are and celebrate who you are. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I think about, you talk about the different types of songs you have. And there are times that I say, this is my favorite song. And then I say, oh, wait a minute. Now I have this favorite song, you know, cause you have a lot of songs that I play on repeat a lot. Um, I don't know if she was able to get one of your songs up. Uh, I was, do you, are you still working on it, Sheila? I think we can do it. Just and, and Larissa, you have a new song out called Soon Soon that we debuted on Awakening Code Radio last week. And it came out right around the solstice. And it's beautiful. And today, when you were talking just now, I had no idea how I was going to do this. But when you were talking about the Divine Mother, I remember that when I first met you, one of my favorite songs is one of your older, 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 older songs. And I think I think Sheila's going to actually play the music video of it. I, <laughs> I didn't know she was going to do that. Or just play the music. Um, I hope this is okay with you, Larissa, that we're playing this. It's okay. I hope it I hope it translates well though <laughs> through the YouTube, you know, with all this. I don't know. The bandwidth might not we might not. I don't think it's going to play Sheila it's um it seems like the bandwidth isn't enough to play it huh Larissa I think you know it's also because all of us are we're talking and it's like that's stopping starting right yeah darn oh I want Sheila, can you stop it? Yes, it's stopped. It 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 um maybe you can give us an overview of this song called Bloom. And I like 
to share the lyrics too, some of the lyrics, because they mean so much to me. And I feel like we're all moving into this space and you're, you're helping to lead the charge to move into the space of trust. It talks about trust, learn to try, you know, learn to trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, that it's interesting this when I wrote this song again, it's like, I wrote it for myself. And at the time when I wrote this, I, I was in that world of just like the clubs and pop rock. And I never, ever thought I would bring this song, sing this song in the world. To be honest with you, it was a song I wrote for myself. It was a song of devotion and what I was feeling at the time um, in my own life. And yeah, it's, it was really a time when I needed to give myself permission to lean in and let go and trust the fall into that, into the place of, of looking at parts of myself that maybe I didn't want to look at at the time. Um, and know that I would be completely received in love. I love that. Mother Mary sanctuary. How, I'm trying to think of the lyrics, Mother Mary sanctuary. I bow before you I bow before you carry me to truth. As I learn to love like you. Oh, See, I can remember crying the ugly cry the first time I heard that song. I was like, oh my gosh, the lyrics penetrated my heart. And I know you have so many other incredible songs that you're going to play for us at, at our event at Sunfire Fest. And I, you know, of course, your, your peace song that you play, the um, Peacemakers, that's always a, a favorite, but you've expanded and have a lot more in your library now so I know that whoever comes is going to get an incredible opening ceremony because we have you playing on the first night and we're super excited that the whole band is going to be there right you want to give shout outs to the rest of the band my beloved band yeah we've got it's a family you know it's truly is a family we may we may have been born of different mothers and fathers but I'll tell you it's it's like a family in our band. And when we have the opportunity to, to tour together, it's, it's such, it's a huge gift because we get to spend that quality time together. Yeah. Um, it's got, like a holiday when you travel, like the whole family gets together for the holiday and you guys make it a holiday. Well, Larissa, thank you so much for coming on. I know that you have so much going on and we, I want to also um, get to Naria, who is one of our other band members is going to play. I think Naria is going to play on Sunday. And so we want to hear a little bit from her and just thank you so much, Larissa, for all you do in the world and for being on with us tonight. And we'll see you at Sunfire Fest in August. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Sheila, so much for having me on the show tonight and for everyone who's tuning in stone and Maria, I look forward to seeing you at Sunfire Fest as well to connect. Yeah. Much love everyone. Have a wonderful yeah. night. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, honey. <laughs> and Maria, I, we were talking before you came on about all the, the little gremlins that have been coming in and trying to usurp <laughs> our little, you know, like I'm all, I'm texting Sheila. Are we, do we have something going on tonight? How is this working? And what we started the show with was how we're just surrendering to the flow and just trusting this process. And I want to thank you for your hard work and getting on this call tonight, because I know <laughs> that I see, you know, I'm, I'm texting with Jennifer and Jen, Jen Berryhill, and I'm saying, can you text her the link to get on? And somehow it all worked out because we just trusted that it would. So mm -hmm. I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about your band, One Heart Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And you told us a little bit about why you love Tico Time Resort, where we're having Sunfire Fest. But can you tell us a little bit more about you know, your love for music and, and what your whole goal is with your music. That's what really attracted me to inviting you to be a part of Sunfire Fest is what you're doing over there in Colorado and what you're going to do for Sunfire Fest in New Mexico. Mm, yeah. 
Well, One Heart Orchestra is kind of a, you know, this collaboration that's come together through all these different synchronicities and just watching life kind of funnel you in a flow towards something that you didn't know you were even headed towards. That's what it's really, it's really been. It's interesting to be here like eight years from the time when I started singing with Magi Wilson, who's my co-lead at in One Heart Orchestra. We've been singing together for a number of years and looking at like, okay, what's the kind of the next emanation? And about three years ago, we started um, One Heart Orchestra and we're really moving into this time of like, okay, we want to, this really is the time, you know, this is the time. We've been preparing, we've been training, we've been practicing, and this is the time to really start putting these songs out and um, sharing the music with a message on a bigger stage. And I was listening to all of these other musicians and um, really just loving the messages that were coming through, these transformational messages, these empowering messages, these ascension messages, these awakening messages that really support all of us in what just what Larissa was talking about, that embodiment piece. And I wanted to do music in a genre that um, really moves the body and and I've done um, some, I've, I've done the, I, I still lead Kirtan. I do Dances of Universal Peace. I lead Dances of Universal Peace, which is an embodiment and music practice. And then um, One Heart Orchestra is really written, uh, you know, Magi is, he is Rastafarian and he has been practicing that way of being in the world as a countryman, as someone who, really is nourished by the earth um, and grows up from the earth and understands plant medicine and understands that relationship um, that we have with the earth and that stewardship. And when we came together, I think another thing that happened, the synchronicity between Jen and I is we've been brought up in the Lakota teachings and the Lakota songs and the lodge and vision quest, humble H ceremony, Sundance ceremony and it was like I think I've I did those ceremonies for so many years and then I was like okay how do I integrate this into the world that we live in and bring this out and not necessarily the songs themselves but like this feeling and this way of being this way of showing up in the world of holding myself sacred, of showing people how to hold themselves sacred, to um, honor the earth and all of the elements of the earth and how they contribute to our life and our sacred life. And then to move that through the body. So moving into this, like the reggae music and how the reggae music and the beat and the rhythm of reggae music moves the body and all of the intention behind that in Rastafarianism, in the spiritual belief system of Rastafarianism and all that, that, um, that livelihood, that enlivenment has to teach us and all that that culture has to teach us about harmony and about all that. I mean, that's when I love um, the theme of Sunfire being about the five harmonies. It's so beautiful because all of these practices and all of these ways of singing are about creating how do we get in the harmonic and then how do we expand the harmonic through sound, through singing, through music, through like running that vibration through our bodies, letting it dance and move our bodies through mudra, through intentional movement, through ecstatic dance where it just like explodes into this like real freedom of expression, but just freedom, like moving beyond how we move, uh, how we posture, how we, uh, just the way that we move through our everyday world. And, and when we can start accessing these other realms and then bringing them into this way, this, I don't know, this world, this reality, it's all the same reality, but it's, it's, it's like moving and experiencing this reality in a different way. And I think a lot of us are really waking up to that 
and recognizing that we can bring that ceremony is not something that we go out and do and then come back and resolve and resign into our usual lives, but that we actually start being the living ceremony. We, you know, we hold ourselves sacred in such a way that, you know, uh, and then the music flows from that and the songwriting flows from that and and writing songs that that uh, the words like land and stay with us, the spoken word, the poetry, you know, the themes, the teachings that we can just sing over and over and over again, you know, that, that we can chant or do as mantra um, until the song is singing us. And then we are the living song is really the idea of what I'm bringing forth through my music and my songwriting with One Heart Orchestra and then getting to work with an amazing group of musicians who, um, you know, we get to do that in the, in the way that reggae music does that, you know, with, with um, the rhythm and uh, the, the rhythm and bass and uh, the bass and drum and uh, the skank and um, all of that really fun stuff that gets I'm people, I think, dancing in a certain way, so yeah. I totally can feel myself wanting to dance in a certain way while you're talking. And I'm so glad that you were able to get on this call to explain that because I have never met you in person yet. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of magic on how you got to be on this bill. And I won't go into too many details about it, but I will say that, you know, as somebody who's, who's, been a part of the vision and, and putting it together, helping Jen as much as I can. Um, and Christy, man, she's been amazing. Mm -hmm. And Teresa, Teresa Stone has been amazing. Just, I, I, I just commend everybody for coming together in the spirit of community, in the spirit of wanting what's in the best and highest good for each one of us and for mother earth and the sacredness of the ceremonies that will be taking place, especially the wiping of the tears ceremony and getting people together to, to, you know, celebrate our differences rather than let them divide us and to listen deeply with respect to each other. And we're being called forward to do that. And I think reggae music, definitely weaves all of the components you're talking about it it feels like you being there was very divinely orchestrated that one heart orchestra you know was talked about I think I heard your name in the beginning but the way that you landed with us was very synchronistic and very magical. And the opening, the doors opened because the divine opened the doors. And one of the things that I'm really seeing with this particular festival and many of the others that are coming online is more and more women stepping into their empowered and integrated feminine, where they're integrating more of this masculine essence but still staying you know in that feminine way of nurturing and receptivity but now there's a lot more women that are coming online and saying this is this is my mission I heard Larissa say that it's my mission and we need to do our mission and we're starting to get messages about what that mission is and I hear from a lot of women that mission is bringing harmony to earth uniting and that love is the ultimate power that's bringing us all together. So it feels really, really strong that we're all being led and we're being called. And it's not like it's, um, you know, a place that we just go down the street. This is a vacation type of journey that many people will be taking. It's not like we're driving five minutes away. We're taking a journey to get to Tico Time Resort. And it's an important journey. It's an it's a journey that I feel many people who make that it's a pilgrimage of sorts, and that those that are called are are jumping over whatever hurdle comes their way to get there. I even have people writing me from Australia saying, "I feel like I have to be there," and it's kind mm -hmm. of one of those planes, trains, and automobiles things to get there. You know, like oh my gosh, we j I just have to make sure I'm there. So. It's coming together in a beautiful way. And 
when she asked me to do these these Mondays every Monday in June, it it was placed on my heart to really have that focus on our indigenous elders and and wisdom keepers that are bringing us back to the natural rhythms of the earth and how to work within the with the earth and with the star knowledge and bringing those two together so it seems to be a theme that's running through these conversations and you really you hit the home run on your description of you know your music and how you got into it and i just can't wait i'm super excited and i'm also for anyone that's watching this and that's feeling called we want to make sure that you know that there there's uh information available at sunfirefest.com and if for some reason you can't join us in person please look up all the the speakers we've highlighted and the musicians we've highlighted just to take in that flavor and be with us in a in a prayerful way while we're all together if for some reason you can't join us in person we appreciate you adding your energy your love your light to the weavings that we're all doing to unite us and bring us forward, co-creating a new earth. We just did a show last week called Portal to the New Earth. And Larissa was on that show on Awakening Code Radio, as well as a man named Harlan Emil Gruber, who makes these structures, sacred geometry structures for Burning Man that he considers are the a catalyst to getting us to this portal to the new earth. So that's where we're at. And we thank all of you. Thank you so much, Naria, for being here and for joining the Sunfire Fest crew and um, adding your light and your love and your heart. And I just can't wait to meet you in person. And Sheila, thank you for inviting me on to to host on on these on these Mondays and um we did our best with the music and it just I I because I'm a DJ you know I'm I have I'm on an FM radio station right kxfmradio.org is the our radio station but we're podcasted so I'm used to always try leading us to the music and having our conversations so that you know our tagline is music and conversation to raise the vibration and we tried and so we can we, we can we can invite our our listeners and watchers to go find these videos that we were looking for and one heart orchestra what naria can you give us your website yeah we're at oneheartorchestra.com all one cool. word and there's videos there so you can hear the cool reggae beats and hear the lyrics and be inspired. That's what we want to do is get everyone in that inspirational place in our hearts so that we all feel it together. Awesome. I really appreciate you being here this month, Michelle. You brought on some phenomenal people and I'm so excited uh, about the conference that's coming up, the big festival. Hope everyone will make that sacred journey to be there. Um, I can't wait to meet everybody in person. Can't wait to hear your reggae music. That's going to be absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate you taking your time tonight to be with us. We've had, um, you know, quite a, a technical difficulty, literally, this entire week and uh, starting like in Friday. It's just been one little technical thing after the other. And it's like, you know what? We're still gonna make this happen. One way or the other, we're gonna make this happen. And so I'm going to, everything has been recorded. It will be up on YouTube in uh, within a day or so, and we'll get that out. We are in the process with the Conscious Awakening Network on upgrading all of our services. We've got a brand new website, brand new phone apps. We're on seven different television platforms. So it, in addition to Roku, Amazon, Apple TV, we're adding four more platforms. We're on um, all of the, um, a lot of the major podcasting. So this will also be sent out through podcasts. So lots of people are going to be learning about this phenomenal festival. And folks, if you're listening, 
please come down and join us. And Michelle, I want to thank you so much for being such a beautiful and gracious, you know, co-host. It's really been the host this month because I really wanted to give you the platform um, because this festival just means so much to you. And I can tell that it's just near and dear to your heart um, because of the elder that you studied with. And so I really wanted to just give you um, this space this month to really pour out the contents of your heart and to share all the beautiful women that's going to be involved. It's really been an uplifting month for me. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sheila. And like I've always said, the consistent theme throughout each one of these, these uh, cosmic conversations we've had has, has been about conscious collaboration. And you Absolutely. are the queen of conscious collaboration. I witness you really just holding space for so many people to share their their hearts and their wisdom. And I so appreciate you for doing that, Sheila. I prayed you in for sure. Before I met you, I'm sure I prayed you in. <laughs> well, for many years, I, I, I watched, you know, and witnessed the way that people were working in, in the these, I guess, spiritual circles. And I really just held out the hope that there would be people that would come together in that spirit of as one rises, we all rise. We're all sharing the journey together and you do that. So thank you for doing that so beautifully. Well, thank you. And if people want to reach out to you, Michelle, and contact you, how can they do so? Well, the best way to find me, I get a lot of messages through Facebook and Instagram. And my Instagram is Michelle and the number two and the word hearts, capital H-E-A-R-T-S, two hearts. Like I have one heart here and I have another heart to, to hold everybody that I love so dearly. Um, that's the best way. I also have Awakening Code Radio is on KXFM and we have a Facebook group there. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, best way. And I'm also part of Disclosure Fest. So if anybody wants to come to Stairway to the Stars in November in Las Vegas, that's another event that I'll be a part of. So my email address is michelle at disclosurefest.org if anyone wants to get a hold of me that way. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here. I always love having you on. Uh, you're just a bright light to my day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see the lights coming through my window. Yes. Love it. Love <laughs> I've never it. seen it so big. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's awesome. It's awesome. And I want to thank everyone who joined us tonight. Thank you, whether you're watching us live or if you're watching us on replay, we really do appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. And if you've not signed up to be on our mailing list, you can go to the galacticalliance.org sign up and you will receive two emails a week letting you know who all of our phenomenal speakers are going to be and I'll just mention that I have Aginos coming on next month and the focus um, is going to be a little bit around disclosure and so um you know, mark your calendars, get ready for that. Michelle, again, thank you so much. Much love to you. Blessings in everything that you do. Blessings to everyone that's watching. And until we're back together again, namaste. Much love, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night.